When you pray a prayer and you believe God, you have hope against hope. You may get a bad report from the doctor. You may go back and he may give you a worse report. It don't matter. Once you set your heart to believe it and you confess it and you see it, you do not let go. Because that's how you fail. When, when Carla got the report she got, first thing I did is I said, I think you're right. The elders prayed, I prayed. I know I'm going to agree. You know what the Lord told me? The Lord said, who said it didn't work? What he was asking me, are you going to say it didn't work? Are you going to let go of what you prayed? Are you going to quit now? Are you going to stop believing because the doctor said it didn't work like you thought? Are you going to keep believing? How many of us will we pray a prayer and then somebody along, comes along and says it didn't work and then we just quit believing? What happened is we really didn't believe in our heart. And the heart told on us because we received the report of someone else. Now once God speaks, it's done. Amen. God don't lie. Amen. And Abraham got hold of that saying his name a thousand times a day, looking at stars and remembering he had a covenant with God every time he had to go to the bathroom. And he suddenly, something got hold of his life on the inside of him and against hope. When he looked at his body in the morning, he looked in the mirror, he was still 99 years old, but something began to happen inside of Abraham and he began to hope against hope. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of what you cannot see. Amen. That's faith. The substance, the building block, the form. It's the form. That means substance. It forms things. It begins to form what you're hoping for and it begins to be your evidence. Even though I can't see it, I have saw it. I may not see it there, but I see it here. Yes. And that is faith. Faith is always in your heart. Yes. Whatever's in your heart is what you believe. It's not what you believe up here for the minute. Not what you say in church. It's what you believe here. You say the right things long enough, see the right things long enough, it gets in here, and then out of here when you speak, it begins to affect that material world. How many of you believe this is true? This is my This is my You can have it. You've been nice to yourself this week? Amen. That's good. That's good. Praise God. You got, here's what happened. You got a name change. You got several things going on. You got verbalization. Call it verbalization. Call it positive affirmation. Or you can do what we call it confession. That's what's happening every time he says his name. Circumcision. Once you got more visualization. And then you got Sarah's name change. Guess what happens with this now? Husband's wife, you need to understand it. Call it agreement. See, when you're believing something, you're married and you're believing something. It's hard to believe when your spouse is going the other direction. Isn't it? If you're believing to prosper, you're believing you're going to have more than enough, and your spouse always talking, I'm going to weak, they're going to have enough. We're broke at that affection. So what you got to do is you got to get on the same page Amen. and say, look here, no, 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 no. We're believing God to move from point A to point B, and we got to say the same thing. We got to come into a Agreement. That's what happened with, with Sarah's name change. They came into an agreement. And if two or more shall agree on earth as touching any one thing, it shall be done of the Father who is in heaven. Oh, amen. amen. This is powerful stuff. Amen. This is what's going on. Abraham didn't know all this. This is new covenant stuff, but I can't help you with it. God's helping us. Amen. I want to talk to you today about your prophecies. They were given to you so long ago you may have forgotten. How many of you have got prophetic words that you know God gave you those words? They're yours. How many of you have some of the prophecies that were 20 years old? I'm going to tell you what God told me. God told me, God, I asked God, I said, God, some of this stuff, you know, this, is, this has been a while. And God said, I didn't want it to, it didn't have to take this long. God said, it didn't have to take this long. God told me, you should have been doing something with that prophecy. You should have been speaking it. You should have been confessing that prophetic word. You should have been seeing that prophetic word. You should have been bringing this thing to pass. You should have just put it in your prophetic journal and left it there. You should have moved the needle. You should have been running toward that prophetic word. I spoke to you the end, but when I spoke 
that that was your beginning. Remember, God shows the end because you know if we went back and we read chapter 15, what He did after He called Him a father of nations, He showed Him that His descendants would go down to Egypt. He didn't call the name of the nation. He said they'll go into captivity for years. He said then I'm going to bring them out with a mighty hand and they're going to come out with great possession. He showed Him the end. But that was the beginning. So when God shows you the prophecy, He shows you the end of the prophecy that was the beginning. Now, how many of you know what this is? <coughs> Sack of rocks. <laughs> I bought these rocks at Walmart. Alright? Come here, come here, Scott. I got a rock in my pocket. Miss Janet has a rock. How many of you men go in your pocket several times a day? I got a rock in my pocket. You see this rock? Hold on for just a second. See this rock? Every time I touch this rock, I begin to say some things. In my mind, in my heart, out loud, if I'm alone, I begin to say, Father God, I remember Suzette Hattigan the day she stood before me and said, I was the father of nations. She said, I got my mark and I hit you on the hip. But she said, you will walk in new dimensions. And then she said, enlarge your tent. Enlarge the cords of your tent. Go to the east and the west and the south and the north. For they shall come from the east and the west and the south and the north to drink at the well of salvation. And the well of refreshing. I hold that rock up. I begin to feel that rock. Amen. It reminds me of that prophecy. Then she said four times, new dimensions, new dimensions, new dimensions, new dimensions in revelation knowledge, in signs, and in wonders. Some of you were there the night she gave all too many years ago. But every time I touch this rock, every time I go in my pocket to get my keys, I touch this rock and I feel it. You take that rock and you just kind of hold it in your hand and you feel it. I'm going to have them hand you a rock. I told them to give you a good rock. You know, but put it in your pocket. Ladies, I don't know, you know, men, it's easy because we reach in our pocket a hundred times a day. Ladies, put it somewhere where you got to touch it. And when you touch it, you begin to say this. And if it's not a prophetic word, it's just something you want with all of your heart. You begin to see it. When you pull that rock out and you look at it, you begin to see what you want. You begin to say what you want. You begin to feel that rock. You begin to feel what you want. And you begin to go after that thing. Let this thing remind you a hundred times a day. But you begin to pull that prophetic word to you. Andy, I want to put you in remembrance once again of a word that John, that uh, not John Foot, uh, Tim Woodson gave you that you are going to take a dime and turn it into a dollar. He's going to take a dollar and turn it into a hundred. And God says you've had it in your heart all these years, this investment dream of yours, to be an investor. God said do not let that lie dormant. Don't let it fall away. He says I know sometimes you get, get there you get a little discouraged and you back off. But God said it's time to put a pedal to the metal and go after that thing and believe that I am with you, that I will never leave you, that I will never forsake you, that I'm going to show you stuff that ain't even in the books yet. But if you'll listen to me and trust me and you'll say it every day, if you'll get you a rock and you'll say I am an of Almighty God. I invest with the knowledge of the Most High. The one who leads me and guides me is smarter than Warren Buffett. He knows what's going to move this year and what's going to move next year. And He guides me where I put my dollar. And my dollars turn into things for the advancement of the kingdom of God and for my enjoyment and my blessing. How many of you believe that? Whatever your prophetic word is, resurrect it, grab hold of it, and take it. So hand them the rock. And the rock. Did you visualize and get your computer? Did it work? You begged and whined a while first, did you? But then you got a picture of it. Did it work? You had the immediate need. How many of you believe you kept begging and whining and it was sped up? Or you believe when you actually got to the place where you believe what God said? If God says, I shall supply all of your. See, she's going to school online and start the Monday. And her computer went down. She can't go to school online without a computer. So it was a need. My God supplies all of our need according to His riches in glory. Amen. See, I'm still rolling this rock. I've been doing this now for a while. Miss Janet's got her rock. Her rock's called sight. Her rock's called vision. Amen. Her rock was like a a uh, piece of carbonyl candy. As a matter of fact, I pull that thing out. I, I, I thought, I better give her this one because I'll, I'll get up late one night and I'll get some carbonyl candy. I'll buy it. It'll be just like a piece of carbonyl candy. Amen. Jerry, this is, your, this is just like the old uh, 
It's like your bulldozer said, if you put this one in your pocket. <laughs> Believe God. Believe God for what you want. There's something in your heart that you want from God. Something that's not immoral, it's not wrong, it's just what you want. It's what you've got to have. And God said, bring it to pass. See, God got down to business with Abraham. 13 years and I'm passing out. God said, now it's time to make this thing happen. And God made, you know what? God has a reputation of making it happen when it don't look like there's any possible way it can happen. Because God wants to see if we'll believe when it looks impossible. Because all things are possible to him that believe. When he's handing out the rocks, I want to remind you two things. Thoughts become things. Everybody say, thoughts become things. Say this with you. What you talk about, think about, you bring about. Amen. Everybody got that? Y'all need to write those down. Because when you find yourself thinking about talking about stuff, just know you fix your brain about. Yes. Good, bad, ruby. Remember the heart. The heart don't make moral decisions. Because the Bible says out of the heart proceeds all kinds of ugly stuff. You gotta put the right stuff in there and you want the right stuff to come out. <laughs> if you just leave it to patent chance, then all kinds of stuff will get your heart. You gotta guard your heart with all diligence for out of it flow the issues of life. That word issues means boundaries. Out of your heart is the boundaries of your life. You can have big boundaries or little boundaries. Whatever you put in your heart. If you've got a little dream, guess what? You'll have a little boundary. If you've got a big dream, you'll have big boundaries. Amen? Don't, don't dream too small. Dream big. Swing for the fences. They Ruth struck out more than anybody else. But up until Hank Aaron come along, he hit more home runs than anybody else. Because he never wanted, he was never looking to just get on base. He was looking to go home and go to home play every time. He swung for the fences. Let's start swinging for the fences. Amen. You got your rock? Yes. Won't you hold your rock up? Say this rock, this rock is a rock. Is a rock. Is a rock. But from this point on, I have brought it into the service of God. This rock represents what God has promised me. What I want from God. Every time I touch this rock, I'm going to have a picture. I'm going to see what I want. I'm going to say what I want. If I'm alone, I'm going to say it out loud. I'm going to rub this rock. I'm going to lift this rock up and look at it. But if I'm in company, I'm just going to think about it. And it's going to get in my heart. And every time I speak, that thing's rushing toward me. Now, Father, I understand the process. Just thinking about it and talking about it is just part of the process. As I think about it, and talk, about it. and talk about it. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is going to tell me what to do about it. <laughs> and I'm going to do it. <laughs> and this thing is going to come to pass. <laughs> and it's going to be like Abraham. <laughs> it's coming fast now. <laughs> this thing's been on the shelf for 20 years. <laughs> but it's coming into my reality now. <laughs> How many of you believe that? Amen. 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 I believe it with all my heart. I believe it with all my heart. I believe it with all my heart. <laughs> I believe it with all my heart. I do this got inside of me. Me and Ms. Jan, I mean, I've never had a message the last five, five, four or five weeks. Uh, this this thing has got a hold of me. Now, I want you to say, I want, I want you to let it set you on fire. I want to get inside of you. You can have the life you want. But you need to sit down on a piece of paper. You need to write it out what you want. You need to write down what you want. <laughs> you need to draw a picture. You need to get it inside of you. How many of you ever heard of Church of the Highlands? Yeah. Wow. Nice little struggling home mission work. Runs about 40,000 churches everywhere, right? Chris Hodgins, I don't know if Chris Hodgins knows anything about visualization or not, but Amy, like she always does, was sharing with her mama some of the stuff that I say. And uh, she always shares the most outlandish, new agey, <laughs> Martian stuff that I say. <laughs> Without any context. But her mama actually 
actually stopped. She said, huh, that sounds like something Chris Hodges told us. Guess what Chris Hodges? How many of you know who Chris Hodges was before he became Chris Hodges? He's Chris Hodges. <laughs> but he pastored a little church down in Louisiana, a small church. He, he was in his parsonage one day and he got to think. He said, God, I don't want to pastor a normal church. I don't want to pastor a small church. I want to pastor a large church. I want to pastor something different. I want to be different. I want to be a different man of God. I want something big. I want to dream a big dream. And he began to talk about it. People laughed at him. He said, you know what? No, only people with big names do that. Only people who's got big money can do what you're talking about. But he would sit around his office and he got it out and he began to draw the church he wanted. He began to write down the kind of church he wanted and the numbers and how, how, what kind of preacher he wanted to be. This went on for several months and then right in the middle of one, all these, what's he doing? What's he doing, church, when he's draw, drawing all that? What's he doing? Drawing pictures. What's he doing? Write this down. He's visualizing. What's he doing when he's telling people what he wants? He's confessing. He kept doing that. Then one day God spoke to him and said, Satellite Church. Two words, Satellite Church. He said, I never heard of Satellite Church. I began to think about it. I began to do research on Satellite Churches. More months go by. Then God says, I want you to start visiting cities. He was a country boy. He lived out in the country. I mean, small country church. So God says, I want you to go to these big cities. He went to ten big cities. He said, I hated big cities. I'm a country boy. I don't want to live in big cities. He said, I'm in Birmingham, Alabama in a, in a hotel. And said, God, why you got me going to these cities? I don't, I don't want to live in the city. I don't want to live in a big city. I just want to pastor a big church. God said, look out the window. He said, I looked out the window, Birmingham, Alabama, rush out the track, and said, immediately I fell in love with Birmingham, Alabama. He said, immediately. He said, that's in that moment. How many know your life changes in a moment? God spoke to you this morning. Your life changes in a moment. Your moment happened this morning. Your life just changed. He believed. He believed. God said, I want you to come to Birmingham, Alabama and start a church. Came to Birmingham, Alabama, started a church of the Highlands. Guess what church of the Highlands was when it started? Small church. Yes. Five, six months in that thing, he said, God, I didn't come up here to pastor a small church. God said, buckle your seatbelt. Because within a year, you'll be one of the biggest churches in Birmingham. Nation. In the nation. Yeah, nation now. But what did he do? He wanted something. He had a desire. He wrote what he desired that. He drew the picture of what he wanted. He talked to people even when they laughed at him and made fun of him. Guess what? Dream of dream so big that they laugh at you and think you're crazy. But you dream your dream. And you make your dream a reality. Amen? Amen. That's good stuff. Was you fed today? Amen. Amen. Did you get some food? Now take it out and set it on fire. Pour gas all over yourself. Set yourself on fire with it. I mean, think about it. I mean, dream. See, here's the thing. You start dreaming your dream, and you start having a passion for something, it takes you over. It will drive you. It'll get you out of bed. It'll start making you read books. And it'll start making you learn. It'll start making you apply yourself. It'll make you start doing hard things that you won't, don't, don't want to do. It'll make you cut the TV off and get hold of some information. Because to get where you want to be, you might have to learn some things. We're not talking about just sitting around daydreaming. Visualization is only part of the key. But you have to build a road. See, Brother Jerry wanted to be a, a logger. And Brother Jerry's a logger. But he had to have a bulldozer to build a road to the wood. Because when you cut trees, you've got to get back there to the trees, don't you? So you have to have a road to get to the trees you're going to cut. So you have to have the machinery. How many of you know you've got something you, you want? You're going to have to build a road. Amen. God's going to show you how to build a road. God showed Chris Hodges how to build a road. Yes. Amen. How many of you want to see your church filled? Amen. Thank God we've had more in the last two weeks than we had a few weeks ago, haven't we? Amen. Because what? We begin to see it. I want you to see it. Remember, don't lose, don't lose the vision. Remember that day I had all of you come up here and we filled these front two rows up? That's all we can fill up. We had you look back and say, we've got some work to do. But we begin to visualize every square inch of these seats filled. We begin to see some chairs down through there. Then we begin to visualize me having to preach shorter because we've got another service we've got to do. Y'all like that, would okay. <laughs> okay. Jerry said, hallelujah. Jerry said, whichever ones are quickest, brother. <laughs> but I'm visualizing that. Y'all visualizing that, buddy? Because see, if we see it together, we come into a brain. Two or four should agree in 
Amen. 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 I believe we're in agreement. I believe I've got a couple of you in agreement. I've done half that bitch. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's happening. It's happening now. Amen. It's happening now. Amen. It happened the moment we begin to believe it. We begin to talk about it. We begin to visualize it. Now, see, when you get on there and you talk to people about your church, you said you better hurry. Because if you get there late, you won't get a seat. So when you come, you got to come early. Because there's something you need. See, that worship team is the best worship team in Alabama. They got this little black lady that gets up there, and before the worship team ever starts, she done got everybody on fire. She done got everybody. Something this is your moment. If you're good, you're good. If you need something, God can meet it right now. 